Welcome to this tutorial. Um, I want to show you how to convert the instant replay timestamps that are stored in an XML uh, file by vMix. How to convert them to an EDL file. An EDL can be opened in Premiere Pro or a similar uh, nonlinear editors. Um, and why I want to do that is because even though during our games we do record the stream uh, locally, we do that at a lower quality. Um, and the highest quality recording is on an SD card in our main camera. So what I want to do, I want to take that recording, which is in a really high bitrate, um, but I want to use the timestamps that I have recorded in vMix during the game with the instant replay module. And I want to overlay those timestamps uh, on my timeline in Premiere so that I have an instant uh, selection from the entire game with just the highlights, which are per game between 60 or 70 uh, moments in a basketball game. So uh, let me walk you through that um, and show you how to automate this uh, as best as I can. And well, it would be great if somebody has more tricks than I do to, uh, to automate it even further. Okay, so uh, right here in vMix, you see that I have uh, recorded 55 or 56, because it starts with triple zero, uh, replay moments. And um, the first thing that I need to do is to find my XML file, which for me is in this folder that depends on your settings, but it is called replay.xml. And we're gonna open that in Excel. So you're gonna need Microsoft Excel. So um, let's uh, fire up Excel and let's open this XML file, which should be here replay.xml then you choose the default option as an xml table okay you may get another warning but in the end you get this now first of all you will need to filter out uh, lots of uh, lines because for example um, vmix stores a maximum of uh, maximum four cameras and a couple of audio tracks. Okay, so now that we have uh, opened the XML in Excel and it has converted it into some kind of a spreadsheet, we need to filter out this column, selected angles, and that is column AF. Okay, and it has an auto filter completely by itself. And we only want the true values. All right. So now we should have 56 replay moments left. And by the blue numbers here on the left, you can see that we are filtering. Now we want to copy part of these uh, values to the uh, spreadsheet that I have made and that you can download. So please see the link in the description of this video, how to download the mother Excel file that you will need. And we are interested in those values right here, the in point and the out point. So I'm gonna select the first couple of values and then holding the cursors and shifts, gonna select them all the way to the last one. Okay, I'm gonna copy those. Okay. And now I'm opening the Excel that I made for you. I'm gonna talk about these first two lines later. But on the third line, you wanna click that, click that cell and paste those two columns with the in points and the out points. Now it's really important to have a line with the number zero and also to leave this line intact, never mind the exact numbers, but this is where there's all kind of formulas already um, filled in that we're gonna 
uh, duplicate to the whole spreadsheet. So you just pasted these two columns of values and we have an extra starting point, so to say. Now, the best thing would be to start your the recording of your replay in vMix at the exact same moment that you start the recording on the SD card in your camera. You can sync it up quite easily later in Premiere, but if you want to make your life easy, um, only start the recording in vMix, the, the, the replay recorder. Uh, only do that at the exact moment that you start the recording on your camera locally, so on an SD card or whatever kind of card. And right here, and that is in column AH. These are variables that I added. That's where you can see it here in the formula bar, the calculations begin. So what we do, holding shift and using the right arrow key, we go all the way down here, which is column AZ. That is the final column with a calculation in it. And we're going to let go of the keyboard and then using the mouse, we're going to drag these formulas all the way down. And I told you at about 55 replay moments. So let's see. They're not in view anymore. Yeah, here I'm getting zeros. So probably, yeah, I drew it a little bit too far. Let's say something like this. So we have now, starting with the formula right here on the first row, I selected all these columns and then pulled all those formulas all the way down. Now, never mind this file name, uh, because Premiere will not make sense of it anyway. There has to be something there and it doesn't really matter what. I'll show you in Premiere how to link to the right source file, the right uh, source video later. Um, well, this is a nice row numbers just counting up. And then we have the in points and the out points converted to time code, which means hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. Now there's a very stupid thing with the EDL file that I have, I'm not sure if it's only in Premiere, but what I am doing, and you can see that for example, in AJ is that I'm dividing, even though I'm recording in 50 frames a second on the SD card and, and also in vMix, uh, I'm dividing by two. For some reason, the EDL cannot cope with maybe higher than 30 frames a second. So maybe it cannot cope with 50 or 60. I don't know why it is, but in order to get it right, you can leave the formulas as they are, don't change a thing, but there's a reason why I'm dividing by two. So in the end, we get in and out points that, for example, like right here, it's a time, hours, minutes, seconds, and then frames with a maximum of 25. But later on in Premiere, the maximum will go up to 50, uh, zero until 49. Funny thing, I don't know why it happens, but uh, this way it does work. Okay, now we're all the way there. Now, the thing we need to build the EDL file, which is which is just a text file, is this column right here. Um, now, the first line, let me double check this. Yeah, and the second line, which were already in the file, they are bogus, so don't use them. You're going to want to start at the third line with the numbers in AZ. That's the one with the time code starting at zero. And we can see that I have my first replay moment, which was the jump ball of the basketball game after seven minutes into the uh, replay recording. So now again, holding shift on the keyboard and the down arrow, I'm gonna select this entire column of numbers. And let's see if the final one does make sense. I don't think so because it starts high and it ends really low. So we're not gonna use that one. Okay, like this. Now I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that into the EDL file. And the EDL file will have any kind of file name. .edl, it's just a text file. 
then it will have a title anything you like and then these this description right here don't change that one so now I'm gonna paste in the data let me show you in Excel this column right here these 56 moments so it starts at 2 and it finishes it at 57 so that's 56 moments in time and that does correspond to the 0 until 55 in vmix so we got 56 of those timestamps and i just pasted them into the edl file which apart from that only has a title and this little line of text so i will provide a link to this file also in the description that's just the edl file and then you yourself paste in this part from excel you don't need to write any code at the end it just finishes okay let me save that as i'm gonna call it test number six doesn't matter what you call it now that is the one that we will use in premiere uh, first of all we're going to create a new project You can name that anything. Never change uh, these settings in my own case. Just leave them as they are. So I just uh, created a new project in Premiere, Vmix test. And of course, I'm going to need my original footage on the SD card, the high resolution recording. So in my case, I'm just reading it off the SD card like this uh, let me double check yeah that was the game so of course you're gonna need those okay now we're gonna right click new sequence from clip Always do a little double check on your sequence settings just to make sure that it interprets the footage all right. So it's 1080p square, 50 frames a second. That's what I wanted to check. So the sequence within my project has got the right settings. And don't no money overexposure. We fix that later on. Okay, let me just unlink the audio first. So now I have the video separate from the audio. Let me a nest and this into a nice little sequence like that let me do the same thing for my audio there you go let's call it audio all right now i'm going to move this up just one level and let me just in case move the audio down two levels because we have some stuff coming in from the EDL file. So all I've done is take the uh, high quality, high res, high frame rate recording from the SD card, put it on my timeline and made nested sequences for the video and the audio tracks. All right, as you can see in the, in the project, we, I have no bins or anything, just one level at this moment. We will import and then take the EDL file, this one, where we just pasted in all the values from Excel. So that's the one, EDL, test six. Open that one, now it imports. Now in my case, I am in Europe, so that's PAL. And as we just saw, it was a 1080p50 recording. Let's call it test here at the bottom, vmix, doesn't really matter what you call it. Okay, so make sure these settings are all right, corresponding to the footage uh, on your SD card. All right, so now it makes a bin or it makes a folder here in the project, as you can see. And it's trying to find all these bogus video source files. Don't worry about that. We don't even need those. They're just like placeholders. But the important thing is within that folder, it also created a timeline, test vmix, 
we just gave it that name when we did the import of the EDL file. Now, if we open this sequence, you see a lot of red because of the bogus file names, but the good stuff is we have a video track. We have two audio tracks. And the magic is that we have all the cut points here, all the vertical cuts. What's even nicer is that because of how the calculations work in Excel, where there are no highlights, we have the red areas. We're going to use those to override, to, to as it were, black out the non-highlight parts of the basketball game. And where we have gaps, that is where the highlight is. So, for example, you can see here it's 21 to 26, so five seconds. That's a five-second highlight. All right. Let's see if these are linked. Yeah, they are linked. I don't really want that. So I'm just going to unlink them. Let's see if anything is linked now. No, okay. So I'm going to select the whole video track. And so now I am in the sequence from the EDL that I just imported. We're going to copy it. Go back to, this is the sequence with the footage from my SD card. We're going to go all the way home. And then because this is selected, it will paste into this layer. Okay, there we go. Now, as I told you before, you should ideally start the replay record button in vMix at the same time where you start the record button of your camera. Plus, my advice would be, and, and well, quite crucially, um, do not cut your recording during the entire game. So leave the camera recording running during breaks, timeouts, halftime, just keep it running. Same thing for instant replay on vMix. Makes your life a lot easier just have one continuous recording. Uh, now, in my case, um, as you can more or less see here, I didn't start them at the same time. Um, I know that there is a uh, offset that I need to use uh, of about 10 minutes. So I'm going to correct for that. Am I there? Let's zoom in a bit. Okay, so I made a 10 minutes plus offset to sync it back up. Now what I will do, I will drag all these areas where there, this is the halftime as you can see, where there's no highlights happening. And I'm just gonna drag them up right on the footage from the SD card. So you see the, see the red areas where nothing is happening? This is the red spot this one but then I have a green area and that's where there's a highlight Just switch these off and as you can see it's 35 to 40 35 to 40 seconds so it's a five second highlight this one where they just scored a basket see he scored a basket so this is where the highlight starts. Okay, it didn't count. It was a shot clock violation, but still. So by dragging all the red areas on top of the SD card recording, what remains is the green areas. Now we need to have the same kind of cuts on the audio track. So what we can do, you cannot take those from a video track, so that's why you need an audio track in the EDL and in the EDL import, this one, this sequence right here. So we copy that, and then we paste that on an audio layer in Premiere. So go all the way home, or even better, line it up with this point right here. Okay, paste it in. So. This is the video from the EDL, this is the audio. The cuts are the same. And you drag that and then watch the 000 so that you don't make any errors there. 
and you just drop it. So now, just as we have green areas right here in the video, we have the corresponding green areas of audio in case you want to use the live audio during the replays uh, in your final edit, your highlight reel or whatever. Okay, now let's save this one just to um, for good measure. Not the most stable program, Premiere, as you know. Same on Mac, by the way. I used that for years. Um, so these are lined up. So the only thing we still need to do, and I'm not sure if there's a faster way, but the way I do it is that I now need to cut out all the red areas. So I am in this selection tool. You can activate that tool by the letter V on the keyboard. And you just drag a little area top to bottom. And for me, I have the shortcut R for ripple, or you can right click and then do a ripple delete. But I have a keyboard shortcut behind the letter R for ripple. So I'm going to ripple out. I have to do that 50 times, but as you can see, it goes rather fast. And then I will get to the very small red areas later. Then I'm going to zoom in. That probably was a timeout where we saw the dancers, and that was a pretty long red stretch of no highlights, etc., etc. So this is a bit tedious. I'm not sure if somebody knows a faster way. So you draw all these areas. Well, you get the idea. So now we have a lot of green. This was the pregame. So that is a green area that we will not need because that was just before chip off. So then I will zoom in with the plus key and then ripple out. And maybe you can link these. That could help. They're already linked. No, you cannot link those. That's that's stupid. Okay. Or you click on one and then you hold shift and you click on the other one and then you ripple it, in my case, with the R key. So in this way, I now have only the highlights of the basketball game. And the uh, only thing left to do is to ripple out all the red areas. And then, of course, Control M. And because we have some red left, we get this warning. And then just export your video to whatever format you like. And in this way, you are using the source footage from your SD card, which is usually in the highest quality, onto that you map the timestamps in vMix, all 56 in our case. They're in XML. We imported that into Excel. Then into this EDL file, this text file, and we imported that into Premiere in order to get all the cuts in all the right places exactly. Uh, for some reason, there can be a two frame offset. Maybe it's here, let me see, yeah. So this one goes from 2640, and mostly I use five seconds or seven. So you would expect plus seven, that would be 3340, but it goes 3338. Uh, that's only two frames, uh, and this timeline is 50 frames, as you can see, 49 and a zero. So that's only uh, 1 25th of a second. So no idea why that is. All right. Um, so I guess this is it. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you have any workflow suggestions to make this even faster, to go from the Femix XML to the Excel file, to the EDL file, import it in Premiere, work on the timeline, and then export your final highlight video. Let me know. Okay, thanks.